We also have a much different approach when it comes to taxes, an approach that says if we're serious about paying down our debt, we can't afford to spend trillions more on tax cuts for folks like me, for wealthy Americans who don't need them and weren't even asking for them and that the country cannot afford. At a time when the share of national income flowing to the top 1 percent of people in this country has climbed to levels last seen in the 1920s, those same folks are paying taxes at one of the lowest rates in 50 years. As both I and Warren Buffett have pointed out many times now, he's paying a lower tax rate than his secretary. That is not fair. It is not right. And the choice is really very simple. If you want to keep these tax rates and deductions in place or give even more tax breaks to the wealthy, as the Republicans in Congress propose, then one of two things happen. Either it means higher deficits or it means more sacrifice from the middle class. Seniors will have to pay more for Medicare. College students will lose some of their financial aid. Working families who are scraping by will have to do more because the richest Americans are doing less. I repeat what I've said before. That is not class warfare. That is not class envy. That is math. If that's the choice that members of Congress want to make, then we're going to make sure every American knows about it. In a few weeks, there will be a vote on what we've called the Buffett Rule. Simple concept. If you make more than a million dollars a year, not that you have a million dollars, if you make more than a million dollars annually, then you should pay at least the same percentage of your income in taxes as middle class families do. On the other hand, if you make under $250,000 a year, like 98 percent of American families do, then your taxes shouldn't go up. That's the proposal.